Welcome back to another episode of Furuno Connections. I'm Clayton Pattison with Furuno Technical Support. And I'm Eric Kunz, Senior Product Manager. You know, Eric, in the last couple episodes, we've talked a lot about transducers. You know, transducer choice, transducer placement, which is crucial to any good installation. Uh, we also uh, touched on the removal of the old transducer with the assistance of Pete Braffin and Chris Lero from Airmark Technologies. That's right. But now we've got the brand new box all glassed in for mm -hmm. this big daddy combo transducer that we're putting <laughs> on this boat. And uh, the great thing is that mm -hmm. it's all ready. Uh, all we have to do is go drill a couple of the mounting holes and okay. run the cables up through and bed it properly. And the most important thing is going to be getting that bottom flush. Yes. You know, and that's mm -hmm. so we have nice smooth flow over, the, over, the, mm -hmm. over that whole face of that transducer. Mm -hmm. So let's go get it started. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are underneath the boat. And what we're going to do now is we're going to lay out the bolt holes for the transducer and the three cable runs uh, to get up into the hull. Uh, to do that, we left a little bit of wiggle room on the sides of the box so that we could get the transducer in there and have it be too tight. Um, so we need to figure out where the center line is so we can line the template up correctly. Um, to do that, I'm going to put a couple of pieces of uh, blue masking tape on here. And then Elias, the fiberglass guy, he laid out the two lines for the keel. There's two here and two here, so I can measure from there and figure out what my uh, center line is. So I'm just going to take a couple of pieces of tape here just to give myself something to mark on. So we figured out our width here. At this point, the front is six inches. So that puts our center line right at the three inch mark. All right, so we've measured out and found our center lines here and in the aft part of the box. Now we're going to use our template. This is the, the template line drawing that we get from Airmar uh, that shows our four bolt holes and the single cable hole for like the standard 111s and 599s and so forth. I added and measured out the other two cables for this deucer because it's special so that we can mark out and drill hole reliefs for all three cables. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some double sticky tape on this thing and we're going to put it up in the box and get it all lined up and then drill our pilot holes so we can drill them from the top instead of the bottom. So we're on top of the boat. We've made the pilot holes in the box. Now I'm going to drill the four bolt holes, which are use three eight bolts, three eight, three eight inserts in the actual transducer itself. I'm going to increase that about a sixteenth of an inch. See how close we get. We can go out about to an eighth if we have to. We're going to basically fill all those holes in with forty two hundred or silicone when we bed this transducer in. But let's drill these holes right now, and then I'll use a bigger drill for the cable entries. So the bolt holes are drilled. I had a little pickup here on this part of the gel coat, but that's not going to be a problem. That's all going to be bedded. Okay. Yeah. So what what drill bit says you're going to use for the uh, for the cable? Oh, so for the cable ways, uh, I picked three different sizes that match up closely with this little dimple strain relief uh, coming out of the transducer. We don't want the top surface of the transducer to uh, to we want it to be flush with the box. Yeah. We don't want them to rest proud on these on these little dimples. Yeah. So we have to compensate. Yeah. For these so we're gonna here. I'm gonna over drill that size a little bit with that one. Okay. Use about a one inch there. Okay. And perfect. about a three quarter, five eighths there. So okay. we'll see what we got. And, and okay. if we need to go bigger, we can always go bigger. So just a good practice is before you start installing the transducer, you wanna go ahead and put some masking tape or something on there to protect the face of that transducer. 
multiple times you're going to be pulling it in out of the boat. A lot of times you're working in a gravel environment. And you also want to keep sealant off of it. You don't want your 5200 getting on there because you cannot clean the face of that transducer with acetone or any sort of chemical. So just a couple layers of blue masking tape. Mask up the face of the transducer. I usually put two layers there just to make sure that it's protected. And this tape will stay on there until the final bedding is done. So we'll just throw a couple layers on there. And then simply just trim off, try to keep the face, the tape on the face of the transducer. And much easier with your glasses, this is a required tool. So as you can see, that's a pretty quick process, but it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. Now if we get any sealant on the face of this or it gets dragged underneath the vessel, just a matter of peeling the tape off afterwards and you don't have to worry about any harsh chemicals contacting the face of the transducer. Okay, now we can string out the cables, feed them through the individual holes, and then push the transducer up and dry fit it and see how close we are and see whether we have to relieve any of the holes to make the bolts fit or the cable entries work. All right. Good. Okay. So you can feed the rest up to us? Yep, you can just keep pulling them through. Alright, just going to keep pulling it slowly through. So it's important that we feed the cables cleanly up. You don't want any loops or any uh, knots in the cable, obviously. Now once the transducer gets up into the hole, we're getting close. Alright, so we're close on these. Let me see if I can start the bolt. Hang on, let me see if I can start. First, uh, the holes are lined up close enough that I'm going to use this little drill as a depth gauge. I have several different lengths of bolts, so I'm going to just stick the drill down in here, let it bottom out in the bottom of the insert in the transducer, and hold my finger, and just see how much depth we have. We have exactly that much depth. So that two and a half inch bolt is going to be too long. This two inch bolt with the washers should be just right. There's one started. And just screw it in all the way down. We'll just make sure it can bottom out. Yeah, that's fine. Beautiful. And this one is close as well, but they're off just about a, about a millimeter. So I'm going to, so what I want to do, Clayton, yeah. I want to drop this transducer back out and just use a little bit bigger hole, a little bit bigger bolt, and a little bit bigger drill to uh, relieve these bolts and see how it fits up in there when I put the uh, hardware on it. Okay, so drop that transducer back out of the hole. I'm just going to use one size bigger drill bit. So I'm just going to relieve the holes a little bit. I'm going to go about another uh, 130 seconds in radius with this bigger bit, and that'll give us enough play to start all the bolts. So the threaded inserts are stainless, and of course we're going to use stainless hardware on the top of this system, on the top of this. I have these four three, four bolts. We're going to use flat washers and lock washers. And we're going to put a little bit on the final installation, we're going to put a little bit of a anti-seize on them so we don't gall the threads by accident. Stainless has a tendency to gall. And it's a really good idea when you're working with stainless hardware to have a little tube and never seize. And just put a little bit on the threads just so you don't run into problems with galling because if these things go, it can be a real nightmare. Yeah, it's worth noting that those are blind holes. They'll, they'll bottom out. So the two things you want to do is make sure that your hardware never bottoms out on a dry yeah, fit. Exactly. And make sure there's no cross-threading. If you cross-thread, as you continue tightening them, you'll actually turn the inserts out of the transducer and damage the transducer. So very important to make sure this, this dry run... That's never happened, huh? It, it's happened. <laughs> it's an expensive Yeah, it's state. an expensive lesson, yeah. yeah. Yeah, do not cross-thread these holes. Yeah, so one of the things you want to consider when you're um, in doing the final installation here is to leave the transducer just proud, so just hanging out of the pocket slightly. Start the bolts on, them on all four corners, and then use a 2x4 or some level surface to span the running surface of the hull. 
push the transducer up flush so you can be sure that it's in line with the running surface of the hull yeah. and then hand tighten the bolts at that point. Because yeah. at that point, the bolts will be just holding the transducer suspended perfectly flush. So now that we've dry fit that and we made sure that the bolts and everything lines up, next step would be to go ahead and add the bedding compound to the top of that transducer. That's gonna create the seal up, up inside the pocket. It's right. also gonna determine the final height. Right. So earlier we measured that the pocket is five and a quarter from the top surface down to the bottom. Right. And we know the transducer is five inches. So we have at least a quarter inch of bedding, bedding area. that we have to put on top. So my suggestion was that we put a bead in there half to five eighths thick. Thick. Mm -hmm. When we push the transducer up, we're gonna go just into the pocket till they feel resistance. Mm -hmm. And then you and I will start the bolts. Start the bolts on the top. Then they can use that two by to, to line it up. As so the straight edge to keep everything perfectly exactly. flat against the hole. And once they, they'll, they'll set that in with a bottle jack, that's mm -hmm. basically gonna assure that the face of the deucer is flush to the surface of the hull. And then you and I will just finger tighten the bolts till they just till we just get the washer surface. Just give resistance, yeah. And then we're perfect. We yeah. let the bedding set up. Then you could tighten the bolts. Then you could snug them up more. Yeah. You after that, yeah, let us let it yeah. set a couple days. Exactly. And then every but then after you're everything. sure that that bedding does its thing. Right. If there's any unlevelness in the bolts, it's, that it's all taken care of. Takes care of. Exactly. exactly. All right. End up with a perfect install. Yeah. All right. So perfect. let's go ahead and right, let's go do it. Let's go bed it and get it in. Perfect. So now that we've gone ahead and done a dry fit on this, we've sure all the bolts and everything line up. We're going to put our uh, cocky material on the top of it. For this application, we've chosen 3M4200, which is more than sufficient to seal this transducer properly. Um, this comes in black or white. There's no difference in bonding strength between those two colors. We uh, previously checked the, the pocket five and a quarter deep. The transducer is five inches tall. So we know that we have at least a quarter inch of bedding on the back here. So we're going to build the bedding up at least a half to five eighths. That's going to allow us to uh, press it on that sealant and make sure that sealant expands out in all the directions we want. So that extra gap, Pete, is, is intentional. Absolutely. So we want to have that gap in there so that we can use that space to line up and make sure that the bottom of this transducer is perfectly flush with the hull. Exactly. And we, ha and, and we have a, a method to do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so just want to clarify that. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Good. So we'll just go ahead, um, you know, the main areas that we need to seal are anywhere that water path could end up going into the boat. So I'm going to use a pretty liberal bead here. I'm going to probably do two layers of that. So there's and we probably want that to a squash out. Yep. Boom. You want it to squash out. Yeah, there it is. There's and your again, half. we want yeah. good, sufficient height on that. Yeah. And right. as, as this goes in there, that's just going to move Ooh. back to the other. Oh, yeah. 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 You do want to be a little cautious of that. So I'm going to be pretty liberal here. Again, I don't think we need and to And the be... reason why we use 4200 uh, is that in case this transducer has to come out, we can still knock it out with 4200. With 5200, you're We're literally still... cutting apart the boat or almost yeah. to get it out. It right? would still be a challenge yeah. Yeah. with 4200, right. but it is removable. It's right. considered you know, semi-permanent. Semi-permanent, yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. So again, I'm going to go pretty liberal here. I don't think there's such, such a thing as using too much sealant when it comes to protecting no, the No, we want that to squash up inside, to in, you know, on the inside, especially on the on the foam layer. Yep. I want to make sure that we have 100% coverage on that foam layer. I'm pretty comfortable with that. You guys yeah, good with uh, that? Yeah, it's look, really, looking really good. Great. All right. It's kind of like cake dip. Let's push it up in there. Yeah. That's it. So we're just going to go in and backfill in the uh, 4200 around the hole. We filled in, we've leveled the transducer on the bottom so it's flush with the hull. Yep. We've adjusted these bolts a little bit and what we'll do is we'll let this all set up tonight and I'll come back in tomorrow and snug up those bolts to make sure that they're, you know, that there's no clearance or play and then we're good. 
So we're done with the transducer installation mm -hmm. and we've given it a couple days to cure. It's mm -hmm. really important. I noticed that even two days later, after we got done, I took yeah. one of the bolts out just to see what would happen and some 4200 silicone still oozed up through that hole. So make sure you give it enough time because we don't want you to go out and pound that transducer face and really sink that deeper into the box when you want yeah. a nice smooth flush mount. Or leakage. Or leakage, that's yeah. right. So mm -hmm. let it cure and you should be ready to go. Yeah. And while you guys were doing that, I got underneath the hull and I filled in the seam between the transducer face and the hull with a good marine grade silicone sealant to seal it all the way around. I did it with masking yeah. tape to make sure it was flush and then cleaned it up so that it's nice and flush and there's no gap there at all. So it'll be a nice smooth transition. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So thanks for watching. And if you like the exciting content that you've seen, click the link below to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be the first one to know when we have new content available with new product information and new exciting stuff from Furuno.